Yeah, yeah. What's up? Ooh, that's a little low. What up, boys and girls? It's your boy, BQ, with your Impact Lounge Impact Wrestling Review. TNA Impact Review, right? That's, uh, that's what we're calling it now. So um, first things first, first time here, consider hitting that subscribe button and uh, give the video a thumbs up. And I want to know your thoughts in the comments. Um, I'm going to pull up my Twitter here real quick, but I want to know your thoughts in the comments about this episode, this return to TNA. If it's everything you expected, everything you had hoped for, or if, um, you know, if it wasn't, if it, if it let you down a little bit. Um, pulling on my Twitter here because I took a, a Twitter poll. And we're going to get into these uh, these results. One time for your mind here real quick before I begin reviewing this episode. And, you know, um, man, what's up with Twitter these days? If you pull up Twitter for whatever reason on a, I've had this problem on multiple computers. It doesn't give you a, a, an a current timeline. Like it's showing me shit from 2000. 16. Like that's the last time I tweeted. So anyway, I'll put up here on the phone uh, because I did take a poll to see what you guys thought of the show. You know, if it was something that, again, if it's everything you had hoped for, if you just thought it was good, you know, nothing great, or, or if you were just left disappointed. I've been doing lots of uploads recently, letting you know just my pleasure, uh, the pleasure I felt watching the show and following the company in the last couple of weeks. So 304 people voted. 75% says everything they wanted. 22% said it was good, not great. And 3% was not what I expected. So I want to know, you know, what you guys thought. Um, it's shocking to me that anyone would say, I mean, we're all entitled to our opinion, you know, but it is shocking to me that anyone would say it wasn't what they expected. So these reviews, when I do a review to a show that I went to, it's always it's always a little weird. It's a little difficult because I'm watching this show for a second time. But um, I was really excited to see how this was going to come off on television because I I just had a great time at the show. I did. It was just the best couple nights of wrestling that I've been to in a very, very long time. I mean, really ever. Like, I just had an absolute blast. And I'm watching this show, you know, and I've kind of talked about this a little bit. But I'm watching a show and I'm thinking they are checking all these boxes that I've been talking about throughout the years. And, uh, you know, I've had a lot of people unfollow me, unsubscribe, uh, still blow up my Twitter to this day uh, about me nitpicking at these small details and shit that doesn't matter. And I just hate the product, you know, like I just secretly dislike it. And now you're watching this episode and and I would say 95% of the things that I've been asking to be addressed have been addressed. And now everyone is these same people on Twitter acting like this is just the fucking greatest shit in the world, you know? Um, and I, I take no credit because I'm a small time YouTuber, you know, but um, I, I, I feel pride because I'm, I feel validated because all these years, all the things that I'm saying and now they're doing them, you know, you can't get on here. You can't get in the comments now and be like, hey, you're, you're nitpicking at, at shit that doesn't, that doesn't matter. Because small details, when, when, when compiled, when added up, when, it, when, when the snowball builds, it, it, there's a bigger effect at the end of the day, you know? Um, I'm watching this show. And it's, you know, it's smooth. Uh, you know, the transitions are very, very smooth. The camera cuts very crisp. The um, the music levels, you know, like, you know, the, I used to always talk about they do the video game sound the but between every single freaking segment. Like, they have that equivalent now, but it's it's just smooth and it's quiet and it does not stand out and just sound horrible and you know they're not playing the music 50 times a show um the only negative thing oh so so let me talk about the beginning because i've also had you know some issues with the the very long slow motion highlights from the week before and 
I understand you do have to show people what happened before. Like you can't, you can't be like AEW and like, Hey, you missed the episode. You don't know what the fuck is going on. Like it's just, for me, it was just like the same formula. It was slow-mo. It was C4 spike. It was now they, the, the way they were doing it, like they had some in, um, I don't even know how you, how you call it, but in normal motion, <laughs> that's like, I guarantee you, that's not what you call it, but it was mixing up like, the impactful parts of the segments in slow-mo and then kind of just showing them back in real time is probably not the way to, to say it either. Um, but you understand what, where I'm going with it. Just easier to watch. The show in general was easier to watch, easier to digest than um, I think has been in many years. The only negative I've got, and I'm going to get a, get it out of the way now, the only negative that I had was when, when the, the hard camera was showing uh, when that, when that particular angle, there was still um, an over, it is still overdone on the color correction. Um, the, the darks are too rich. And when you do that too much, you start blending. It, it blends oranges and reds together and dark blues and blacks. And it just, it does not look that good. So when it wasn't on the hard, hard camera, I thought the show looked really, really good. But once it was on the hard camera, it was dark again. Now, not as bad as, as previously, because for a couple, couple reasons, the, the ring was lit up better, much better. Um, and the yellow ropes, so because you're giving yourself some color contrast, some better lighting, it's not that bad. Like, there's clearly someone there when they're doing the post-production <laughs> that is just stubborn to the point that says, hey, we have to fuck with the, the color levels. Now, you cannot, whether you do photo editing, video editing, you don't just use raw images. Like, you always have to get in there and edit. Like, when I do my... My um, my graphics, for instance, okay? I don't just grab the raw picture of Josh Alexander. There's things that I have to do so that he somewhat blends into this background, right? So that he, um, you know, so that his skin color, you know, say he's having an, an orange day and it just does the, doesn't pop out. Like I have to, you know, I got to mess with it a little bit so it, so it blends in. Um, you know, just using some, some other examples here. Uh, you know, obviously they're not standing in front of this road, but I have to do my best to make it look like they are. So you, you can never just take a normal, uh, you, you know, whether it's video, uh, whether it's photography, like you can't just take the photo for what it is. And it's like that in video editing, like there's things you have to do, but, but, but it is very much overdone with this company and they've, they decided that is the way to edit for whatever reason. But I, I didn't think it was too, too bad. You know, it was better. Um, but the one, the one area that was really bad on this show was the backstage segments with Jim Miller. Um, there was some other backstage segments like which Giselle Shaw was talking and everything where it's still, you know, they fuck with the levels big time for those for whatever reason. But when Jim Miller was doing the backstage, Fuck with the color levels, number one. Number two, the lighting is right in her face. You know, lighting should be several feet back at an angle. Um, when Will Ospreay is cutting his promo and he's standing in front of Jiller, GM Miller, there's just this dark shadow covering half of her face. Like, this is, this is amateur shit. That, that is the one part of the show. Like, I can get around the the act in the ring. I was like, you know, it's still, I wouldn't, you know, mess with it that much, but it still looked okay. But the backstage stuff, very bad, very fucking bad. That looked horrible. Um, there was absolutely no change in what they did before. Clearly they're in the dark and then they just turn on the, 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 uh, the lighting they have set up. Lighting should be more of an accent. It shouldn't be like your main, the, the, the late lighting, that you set up should be your main source of light. And that's what they're doing. And, uh, you know, Jill Miller's face completely lit up shadows all over the place. Like 
when you're watching these other companies, do you see it? Do you see like the shadows against, you know, when, when Re- Renee Paquette is talking, you know, do you see, you, you understand what I'm saying? Come on. Um, but, uh, but overall, I thought it looks good. I really did. Um, cause one of the things I've always said is you have to look more like NXT than you do like MLW or you do like NWA and NWA's production quality has, was better than impact. But in this TNA era, now that it's kicked off and it's our first episode, I would say it looks more like NXT than it does those other companies. And that's um, that's what I wanted. But yeah, you know, again, I, I feel a great deal of validation because, uh, you know, not things, not just the show, but social media. And now, um, forgive me, I can never remember her last name, but Sam, who, who's uh, been doing you know, post show stuff and, and took over the Instagram today and was doing Instagram lives all day, you know, like it's crazy. One of these days I am going to take credit. That's, that's how, how, <laughs> that's how wild it is that they've just addressed uh, so many of the things that I wanted to do. And uh, it would be unfair for me to, to be overly negative at this point. You know, I'm really happy with what they're doing, but let's get into this episode here. Um, so as my live experience, they did record uh, two matches for Explosion to, to kick things off. And uh, I'm not spoiling matches. I, it's, at the end of the day, it's Explosion. I don't think anyone really, really cares. But they did um, Rhino versus Shira. And they did Rich Swan versus, um, who do you go up against? Joe Hendry. So that, that, was a, that was an odd matchup for me. But... You know, what I said in my last upload, or I said TNA is back, the matches for these two sets of, two, the, I guess it was one day of taping, but it was two episodes, were very, very fresh. And, yeah, they did a lot of first-time matchups. Like, we, Lord knows we know, because Tom Hannafin reminded us. But there was just something about the matches they put together that, that just felt different. And Tom Hannafin did not hit us one time with a first time ever matchup. We've been writing him hard on Twitter and he's been um, engaging with us about it. So uh, we, we definitely, we definitely um, helped make some improvements of the show there. Another thing, I, I guess is a little bit of a negative. It wasn't negative. It was just kind of funny. I, I, in our Twitter group, I was like, are Tom and Matt, do they receive a bonus for how many times they say TNA? Because before the first match started, in the minute of, um, I forgot who the first match was, coming down to the ring, whoever was coming down to the ring first, I think it was Kushida. Between that and him actually getting into the ring, I think they said TNA 10 times combined. It reminded me of <laughs> when WWE branded the Divas to Superstars. Uh, they announced it at, at WrestleMania. This was the last WrestleMania I ever watched. And Michael Cole beat it to death for the 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 match that it was like Charlotte versus who knows. He beat it to death for like eight minutes. Like these superstars, you know, it was just so over the top. <laughs> and that's that's kind of what I felt in the beginning of the show and really throughout the course of the show. At one point, Tom said, re- reference hard to kill. And he goes, that hard to kill... TNA hard to kill. So it, he's clearly doing it on purpose, uh, but that he actually corrected himself when it was totally unnecessary. Like he could have just said hard to kill. But I think I think for these first few months, they're, they're going to beat TNA into your head uh, when it's probably not totally necessary. So um, normally I would live stream these reviews. And that's what I usually try to do, but I'm, I'm on a bit of a time crunch today decided to, to take a work shift tonight so i'm going to be working overnight um and hopefully work doesn't doesn't um affect things going forward uh what, what month is this january march or april i plan on going down and working part-time uh, and working for myself the rest of the time so uh and only reason i'm working part-time is because i like what i do so um hope th- there should be between March, April, and the summer, a real, uh, hopefully a lot more YouTube content than, you know, what I was doing on a regular basis last year. 
So the first match we got, I, I, and I think the first match after explosion, I think it was, um, I think it was the Zaya Brookside and Tasha Steele's match. I think that's the real first match we got in the taping. But here on the episode, it was the X Division, X Division uh, six way: Kashida versus Trey Miguel versus Laredo Kid versus Mike Bailey, El Hijo de Vikingo, and Jake something. So normally, I hate these kind of matches where it's just six dudes, you know, flipping around the ring. But I enjoy this a lot. The guy sitting next to me, he um, he kind of reached over to me at one point, and, and he was like, did they say why these people are wrestling? Uh, and the point he was trying to make was, it, we got six dudes in the ring, X Division, but there's no X Division title implications to this at all. You know, this wasn't like a, a number one contenders match. And I know sometimes in the past they wouldn't say when something is the number one contender match because they don't want to give it away. But that's kind of what I was thinking maybe happened, but it was not, at least to my knowledge, watching the episode, I don't, I don't recall um, them saying this is, you know, number one contenders match for the X division title. But I, I really enjoyed this. And as much as these guys had similar styles, there was also like contrasting styles of the same way and in, in, in the same breath. So, um, really a lot of fun to watch just a great like opening it's a new area era of tna match you know because uh, they were really known for the x division for so long and there was a time under dixie carter where they got away from the x division and it was it was kind of seen as a sideshow and we were getting uh you know braxton's the braxton sutters and they were you know throwing in um the Rockstar Spuds and all that and trying to, you know, so the X Division, like, yeah, sure, sure it is, you know. Uh, Jake Something won this here, and I think you guys are going to start feeling, I, I got from the, you know, the overall theme of being there live, and I think you guys are going to get it going forward, is that there just seems to be more of a focus on their guys, because I've been at a rebrand before. I was I was there when... Bruce Pritchard did the TNA is dead promo. Um, and it was Jeff Jarrett was in charge. They bring in Alberto El Patron. He wins the title on the first night. They brought in, uh, and then they brought in a bunch of randos. It was kind of like the debut of Reno Scum, which people aren't really familiar with. Uh, Diamante, which she was Angel Rose at, for a little bit before she became Diamante. Um, Eva Story, who was, you know, uh, Brandy Loren, you know, who who did more uh, work with, with the company over time. But, um, you know, they were, they were just bringing all these new names and, and, and trying to freshen things up. But this rebrand is a little bit different because they're trying to push the people they have rather than like, hey. The beauty of not streaming live is that I just had a hit pause for about 10 minutes while my kids made all sorts of noise next to me. So the beauty. So good thing I wasn't, I wasn't streaming. So we're going to move on here. So again, just really great, very fun, <coughs> excuse me, entertaining opening match. And then, uh, then was the aforementioned Gia Miller interview with Will Ospreay backstage, which again, um, I've done nothing but praise this company for the last couple of weeks. This looked like shit. And they seriously have, I mean, I, I just don't understand how anyone watch, sees uh, the way this looks and says, let's, let's run it back next week. All right. I know there's some motherfuckers watching my channel. Okay. Fix it. Um, but great. Will Ospreay or promo anyway, though. I don't know why Dee Miller, she, she has come a really long way. Like she does a very good job now backstage, but. I don't know why she does the goofy deer in the headlights look uh, doing these interviews. I understand that there were backstage interviews and WWE interviewers in WWE that did that for a long time, but it's, it's unnecessary. Um, like at this point when you're backstage interview for as long as you have been, like there should be nothing to shock you. Uh, they are going to say, then they did an Ash by elegance little promo package. 
it, it's crazy that people are getting online here and, and trying to say it's a knockoff of Tony Storm. Like she has done nothing so far. She hasn't cut a promo. She hasn't wrestled. She didn't wrestle at the tapings. I'll l- let you know that ahead of time. Like they're they're making us wait on this. So it's so stupid. I promise. Once we actually see her do her thing, it's going to be so far from Tony Storm that <laughs> I don't know. I, I hope people feel ridiculous for it. And we got Giselle Shaw cutting a promo. Gail Kim just happened to be standing right there and walked in. This, um, this, you know, the editing is still a little rough on these, but uh, this looked a lot better. This was better, looked better than the, um, the Jim Miller interview, but it's, it's just unnecessary to stand in the dark. The one thing I was hoping, hoping, hoping they were going to bring back was the kind of backstage shaky cam angles. Uh, because when they did that, it just made it look like the cameramen were really stumbling onto the wrestlers. And it didn't come off rehearsed. It came off, if, I always felt like it felt very real. So I was kind of hoping we were going to see some of that rather rather than this. And Gail Kim is letting Giselle know she doesn't need Savannah and Jay Vidal. So we'll see where they're going with that. And we got Zaya Brookside versus Tasha Steeles. Um, by the way, the match graphics are incredible. I absolutely love them. They are unique. They're different. They are fresh. They are unlike graphics that any other company has right now. I'm I'm elated at what they're I'm elated at what they're doing. This company again. I, I might have to start taking uh, you know. Credit. One of these days I may, but right now I'm not. <laughs> I say that I say that jokingly, but they're just oh, this comp. This is like a brand new company. Um, I'm I'm so refreshed watching these motherfuckers. So Tasha Steels versus I Brookside. I thought this was uh, very good. Tasha Steels. She's really over. Um, as I said, I'm pretty sure she's the first person that came out once they started uh, recording. And just everyone, I, I mean, she brought a lot of energy. Everyone was really into it. I don't know how long they can ride this heel train with her. Like, she's a great heel, but people like her a lot. And we don't want to be like AEW where the, the heels are getting are getting cheered. You know what I'm saying? But I enjoyed this quite a bit. And then... uh. Brookside won with the Brooksy bomb to, to secure the victory. And I believe they're having a rematch um, in Orlando. So I hope this isn't this like 50, 50 booking, you know, like it, it's good to see a, see Zaya Brookside get a win. There was nothing to suggest from this, that they were going to be feuding though. So, so I don't know, but good knockouts match. Good, a uh, good first knockouts match of the year. They showed the video where AJ Francis, I thought AJ Francis was going to make us watch that video, like no shit. And no one in the live audience wanted to see it, but they played the Joe Hendry, um, the Joe Hendry one again. And my kids love Joe Hendry. Uh, one time I had interviewed him, one of my interviews I did several years ago. And when I, when I shut it off, he actually talked to my daughter on the phone there or on the not phone, but on zoom or whatever. For a few minutes, because uh, I just said my kids wanted to say hi to him, and they really took to him since then. So they absolutely love that he came out at at Hard to Kill. And then they have Joe Hendry talking about you know at Hard to Kill, even though he's wearing the same exact clothes that we just saw in the segment when he was attacked. Uh, DJ Who Kid. It's funny because you know these guys aren't workers. He hit the shit out of him with that laptop. Like that sounded horrible, you know, because obviously they're not trained. But he he uh, he hit him pretty hard. This this, however, with DJ Who Kid in the trash can, fake, um, you know, being fake knocked out and whimpering when when Joe Hendry threw the laptop and his his. Uh, lap which easily could have hit him in the face i mean he he landed that perfect in the small space between his knees and chest because he actually could have could have uh 
clocked them right in the face with it. But I thought the promo was okay, but you know, I I, I thought who kid in the trash can was was real fucking cheesy, and I, I would like to see a lot less of that. Grizzled Young Bets took on Eric Young and Frankie Kazarian. This was, you know, I mentioned that they they were going a, a different direction with a couple characters. And I think you're going to see that next week uh, with someone else as well. They're kind of going some different directions. And they did the Frankie Kazarian heel turn here. No one saw it coming. I think watching it TV, watching uh, on TV at home, just like we we're watching in the arena, we thought Eric Young was going to turn on him. Um, but it was the other way around. And this is the difference between TNA and AEW because the heel turn was so well done that he got genuine heat from the crowd. Like you could hear it on TV. They're saying, fuck you, Frankie. And he was, he was getting booed. You know, you, you do this heel turn on AEW where they do heel turns every other fucking week and people are cheering and smiling. And um, this got over well with the audience. Um, I say got over, like it got a reaction. It got the necessary reaction because this isn't something that they overdo. You know what I'm saying? Um, I will say the Grizzled Young Vets, I was familiar with them. I've never seen them wrestle. I could do without them. I wasn't, um, I wasn't, impressed isn't the right word. I'm impressed with everybody for the most part. I wasn't, in, I wasn't overly entertained with them. Um, just here at the, uh, for in this particular match and, and at hard to kill, like they were a little boring to me. My kids found them boring too. And um, I don't know how long they're going to be around. My prediction was when I was doing my hard to kill predictions was that, um, Bullet Club was going to win, but that these guys would take the titles off them at the at the, at the, at um, Snake Eyes. But I forgot Snake Eyes was just one day of taping, so um, I, I expect these guys to win the title here <laughs> within the month. Within uh, when when they tape in Orlando, I just know the way TNA books, uh, so I, I fully expect them to win the belts. I don't really want them to. Like I said, I'm not I'm not overly entertained with them. But this was a pretty decent match. Um, I was kind of checked out of it a little bit in, in the arena. Because like I said, they just don't do a whole lot for me. Uh, Eric Young, I don't know why in the match graphic it shows him without a beard. Like, we got to fix that, right? But that was that was really over um, at Hard to Kill when he when he took the, the mask off. He had the beard underneath. And I had a feeling he did, too. But he looks a lot better like that. He doesn't have to grow it all the way out of the Daniel Bryan fucking scruffy shit. But, you know, he needs to keep the beard. I thought I thought it looked a lot better. I think I think most people would agree with that. So really interesting heel turn. Uh, so we'll, we'll see where that goes. Uh, Moose, Brian Myers, Eddie Edwards, and Alicia, uh, the system, were celebrating after Moose beat Alex Shelley. Um Again, they're were they were wearing the same exact clothes. You'll see that. You'll see it next week. Alicia's wearing the same dress that she wore uh, at the match next week against Okada and the Machine Guns. So, I don't know. I, I just want to see them pay attention to detail in areas like this when they're saying, hey, this was after the match. No, no, it wasn't. You know what I'm saying? Like, So, we're seeing Alicia in that dress this week. We're going to see her next week as well in the same dress. Just like I mentioned with Joe Hendry. Cutting a promo wearing the same exact clothes from the week before. I'm into the system, though, folks. Um, during the tag match at one point, Eddie Edwards just turned to the crowd and said, These, the system works. And it got it got heat. Um, fuck the system is a thing. So you're going to hear that those chants. <laughs> and I think you're going to hear them a lot going forward. But um, I'm into the system. I think, I think just about everybody is. The Nick Nemeth graphic, Nick Nemeth, I'm sorry, it was really, really good. It almost looks like the kind of graphics I do for my, my channel a little bit. But I thought that looked really cool, uh, the one that they did for him. But he came out, he cut the promo, and, you know, it, it shows that there is a benefit from bringing people on that were in WWE because him cutting a promo was was well beyond what the majority of the TNA roster can do in there. So I thought it was very 
beneficial for the show, very impactful. It was the only promo in the, in the two days. And um, I just, I, I thought it really hit home when he kind of said, this is my first time doing it as Nick Nemeth. You know, I've, I've done this and this. I'm a, I'm a former world champion and I'm going to be the world champion here. We know he is. We already know that. Um, but this is the first time I'm going to do it as, as Nick. And Steve Mathlin came out and I was really happy that that's going to be his first feud. And um, I thought Macklin killed it here. I thought, you know, talking about Nick Nemeth is going to suck the blood out of TMA, TNA and then leave again, not leave again, but he's going to leave. And when he hit that line that no one's going to remember the name Nick Nemeth, all they're going to ask is whatever happened at Dolph Ziggler, like that hit with the live audience. I thought that was great. And this overall, this was a really good segment. And as I said, he was the only promo when I was there. So keep the promos to, uh, to, you know, if it's going to be effective for the show, like don't just have people come out and talk just to talk. Like, this isn't Monday Night Raw. This was just a good use of an in-ring promo. This is a good use of him. They didn't, uh, you know, throw him in the ring right away. They're making us wait a little bit, which, you know, the impact ba- under the impact banner, they wouldn't have done that. You know, he, he would have. There was a time where he would have, his first match would have been for the world title and he would have won, you know, not, not over the past couple of years, but there was a time that, that's what it would have been. So to have him come in and do this was was great. I don't know what the viewership numbers were for this show, but I, I would imagine they're up quite a bit. I watched on the Ultimate Insiders, and there was a lot more engagement in there, which I believe they probably had double. Uh, double is a strong word. Thirty to forty percent more more viewers uh, based on the engagement in there, and I always guesstimate that they have about 10,000 views in there uh, just because I know YouTube and I know how many likes and how many con- comments typically there's a ratio of how many view- of views are on something. And I, I, I would guesstimate that about 10,000 people watch from week to week on the Ult- ultimate insiders. And I, I know there's, there's many of you out there. No, it's probably like 50 or 60. It's not, I promise. But I, I would say it was probably close to double that. So I think they did get a lot of signups. And I think it was from doing engaging content on social media. That's what I've been asking for. Not not posting matches of people who used to be there. Like no one is going to sign up. You might get clicks. You might get YouTube revenue, which I guess is a goal too. But you're not going to get uh, long-lasting fans going forward posting that shit. But really good stuff. Um, and then Gia, Gia interviewed Jordan and Grace backstage. Trinity happens to walk up. And again, this this just looked bad. The lighting looks really, really bad. But the, she challenged Jordan and Grace. There's some bad, very bad acting here. Uh, but she challenged Jordan and Grace for next week. And um, that was a good match. So we will... It's a good episode next week. I think that's a Nick Nemeth debut. It's got we've got this, we've got the Okada match. Like this was just a great set of tapings. Uh, a, a great yeah set of tapings. Taping. Jay Vidal was in a ring after this. Very random. Uh, he cut a pretty good promo actually. I, I thought I, I kind of liked Jay Vidal, but this was just like at Hard to Kill where you get this tease, and the people in the audience there did too. When you have this random guy come out, and I, I did say Nick Nemeth was the only promo. This this doesn't count. This lasted about two minutes. He comes out, and you just think this motherfucker who wrestles has wrestled like three times on television, if that, is just randomly coming out in his ring gear. We're getting a debut, right? No, it is fucking PCO, who just so happens to be in Gorilla on the operating table with the doctors, the surgeons. I don't know the point of this. This was like the low point of the episode for me. I just, I don't know why it was. PCO, if they're not careful, PCO is going to be the new Tommy Dreamer. And before that, it was P. 
P.D. Williams and suicide, you know, this, this crutch, it, they become a crutch. And, but it's a little more like Tommy Dreamer, where it's, you know, who's the guest partner? Who's the surprise opponent? Who's the next challenger for the title? And then it's, it's the PCO music and the whole, I don't know the point. I, I, I don't get it. And I didn't care about this. Um, got a nice little promo of Alex Shelley and uh, Chris Saban after this. So I thought that was pretty good. I'm not going to get into detail what they said, but, the and then Josh Alexander versus Will Ospreay. I had to let my kids know ahead of time because my son is not like long matches, just like his dad. <laughs> but I said, Hey, this is going to be a long one. And uh, it was, and it was excellent. A lot of people are saying that this was better than the first match. What I liked better about this one, I thought the first match, this had one, one too many near falls for me. There, there, were, there, there was a couple that were a little unbelievable, but the first match, Will Ospreay went for the hidden blade like 90 times. And this one, he did go for it a couple times, but I just thought it was, he kept that, kept that in check a little bit. And I think that's a great move. It's, it's a simple move, but it's got great presentation. It's got a great name. And, you know, you can get away with simple moves. Like I, I criticize impacts finishers a lot of the time, but if the, if the presentation is there, you got a badass name, like you can kind of get away with it, you know, and that's, um, that's one of those moves. I'm kind of disappointed in myself for not doing a meet and greet with Will Ospreay. It's just the meet and greets after are always like a little bit of a shit show. Like no one really understands what, what's going on. And um, I ended up I ended up paying up for the Trinity one because uh, Osprey was a little more expensive, and um, you know I paid for Trinity, I paid for uh, Okada, which was not cheap, um, and uh, what was the other one? Oh, well, we got Zaya. Well, shout out to Doctor Ross. He did comp me um, for my son. He did comp Zaya Brookside for us, so um, it's very nice of him. And, you know, I mentioned before we had a good, good little convo. Uh, he said he doesn't hate me. He doesn't want me to bury him on the show. So <laughs> he, I was very appreciative um, of him taking care of my family. And he, you know, he let us know he'll take care of us going forward. So um, I'm very appreciative of that. But uh, it was probably my only opportunity to meet Will Ospreay. So I'm kind of, kind of disappointed myself for not paying for that. But... This was the match we, we knew Josh Alexander was going to get his win back here. Like we just, we just knew that, but we knew we were in for something special. The one area here where they dropped the ball is that I don't remember what Will Ospreay. Oh, he was getting ready to do it. He, he wanted to do a hidden blade, I believe. And he was finally like, he was like taking his armband off, but the camera was showing him. One of the best parts of the match is, it, as far as the story goes, they they didn't show you, and it was Josh ripping off his headgear, throwing it throwing it on the ground, and coming. In and Will Osprey fired up, beating his chest like hit me. We we missed that, and I kind of wished that um, you guys saw it because I thought it was an important part of, important part of the story. But you know, he got the win that he was supposed to get, and I have a different. I have a renewed appreciation for Josh Alexander. Like he was kind of boring me a little bit, even though I was, I was acknowledging that he, he was doing great matches. He was getting a little boring for me, a little dry, but seeing him in rest in person, wrestle Hammerstone and Osprey. I'm just like, man, this motherfucker is good, you know? So I have a new appreciation for him and a new, um, I'm I'm behind him. I'm behind him. He like he's our guy. He's he's the face of the company. Like I'm I'm behind him and he needs his his recognition. You know, when 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 um Jim Cornette was reviewing like the PWA top PWI top one hundred, you know, Josh Alexander was top ten and he came across him and was kinda like, I you know, I don't know who he is. You know, Jim Cornette would love Josh Alexander. <laughs> He just needs to be more of a household name. 
but I don't think you do it by forcing him into the world title picture all the time. And then just trying to have these great long matches like they, this, this does help. But uh, in, in 2024, I like to see them find some interesting storylines for him. And uh, but, but yeah, I, I've got a new new appreciation for him. And shit, my, we met him, him and Jade in the food court after the show. And I didn't want to bother them because they were having some some Mickey D's with the family. But, you know, of course, I did bother them. And, and uh, they were really nice. Um, and then Jade took a picture of my son. So that, w- that was a really cool moment for us. Like we just had I, I keep repeating myself. But we had a freaking great time. I've just, I just never have enjoyed myself like that at a wrestling show. And I've been to WWE. I've been to WWE pay-per-views. I've been at several AEW shows. There are AEWs actually coming out here next month. And even though I don't really watch them anymore, I'm going to go. It's Collision because they're at the Dollar Loan Arena. And that's, I mean, it's closer to my house than the Palms is. I mean, it's in the city I live in. I live in Henderson, uh, which is right outside. We're on the border of Las Vegas. I mean, I could drive three minutes and I'm there, but, uh, so I'm right there in Henderson and, and, and AEW is there. So we, we got to go. I mean, it's, it's, it's a small arena too, that they're doing. Um, but yeah, I've been to AEW. I've done, uh, I've been to NWA shows, countless indie shows. You know, this was just unlike any of those things. And I've been at fucking undertaker returns, no, I'm Undertaker off TV for a year and it shows up. Um, you know, I've seen Ric Flair wrestle, Brock Lesnar, all you know, I was at both of the um both the nights, the one where the Shield all won the titles, and then the when the Shield ultimately lost the tag team titles to Cody and and uh, Dustin. Like I've been around a lot of cool shit, final deletion. But there were this was just special for me. This this was really special for me. And then Scott came out at the very end, and I was really shocked this was on TV. Usually this this kind of thing is in. His voice was cracking, and I mean, I say it all the time. He is not a warm, on-screen personality, but he is a great guy who's done great things for this company. He has saved this company, and um, he, there was a lot of passion behind what he said, and... and uh, it, I'm just glad this was on a show. When he's saying TNA is back, it's never going away. You got some great photo ops of uh, Will Ospreay and Josh Huggin. And there's part of me that thinks Will Ospreay would have loved to stay in TNA. But I think t- Tony made him a godfather offer, you know, an offer he can't refuse. And that's where he's going to be. But um, that company right now is doing some of the worst worst television i've i've seen in years with wrestling it's it's very bad creatively it's really lacking and i understand there's more opportunity for a guy like will osprey to have some great matches there than than with tna due to the size of the roster due to the options but uh it just wouldn't shock me if he the back of his head he, he he's not thinking man i kind of wish i was a part of this because this is what they're doing right now is special. It's, it's, it's a movement, you know, AW's ice cold right now, ice effing cold. And all they can offer is money, but at some point that's not going to be good enough. And Gail Kim had said it with Ash by elegance you know, when you, especially she's referring to the knockouts, but in general, she's like, if you come to TNA, like we're, for the most part, we use you, you know, you're not lost in the shuffle somewhere. Like she had said that Ash could go to AEW, but look at, look at Taya Valkyrie. You know what I'm saying? She is relegated to ring of honor and that could have happened to her too. But I think, um, hopefully in 2024, they're going to build this roster up a little bit more. And I think you can get the bigger name free agents when you, because what I was saying with CM Punk and Will Ospreay, I was like, if you sign Will Ospreay, then you have to sign CM Punk. And then you have to sign the next big free agent. Like, because there's not enough options of guys for them to go against. But I really think little by little, 
they're going to get there. And because there seems to be, for me, at least the way I took it, a renewed focus on the people on their roster, it's clear they're not like, hey, let's bring it. You know, they didn't bring in all these guys and all these surprises. And, hey, this is how we're going to excite you. They were like, we're going to do it with our guys. And that's what he was talking about all the time. Where's our guys? Where's our guys? You keep bringing in other people. Where's our guys? Why aren't they shining? And it seems like that's the direction they're going with now. So maybe now we're finally going to get, you know, Jake something built up to the main event. And the guys that came through, the Rohit Rajus and stuff like those guys, maybe they finally get there instead of them leaving because they're stuck in the X division. You know, maybe Ace and, Ace and Bay finally get up to that main event scene. And maybe they become that that group of main eventers that now you can bring these bigger stars in and, and they will say, Hey, there's all these matches here for me because they have added value to the people on their roster. I'm going to wrap it up there, folks. Um, again, I was on a, on a, a time crunch here. That's why I didn't um, do a live stream. And again, this is a little weird for me to review something that was there at in person, but um, we've got about 45 minutes, 46 minutes here of, of content and I'll be back again next week and got some other content coming to the channel that you guys should dig. But for now, I'm your boy, Positive BQ. I'm out. Peace.